This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Brits Blend, the Cajun, S&P Bud, and the Ope. You can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to visit the site for special deals for the holiday. The Mad Canadian has three deals for you to choose from. Uh, I would tell you the prices, but the Mad Canadian site is currently down. But be sure to check it out here once he has that updated to check out all the great prices there. Be sure to use promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. All right, first ad read, I'm going to tell you why you should shop at Iron Bean Coffee. They are a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch fresh roasted after you order coffee brewer. So, no stale coffee. It doesn't get roasted until you order it. It gets roasted, it gets bagged, it gets stuck in the mail. And it arrives at your house a couple days later. If you live in or near Toledo, Ohio, you can get even fresher by going there and just picking up the order yourself. Now, if that's not enough for you, all of their coffee is fair trade certified, USDA organic and veteran owned. If you're shopping for the holidays, they have gift cards available and you get free shipping over $50. What, what 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 did I say there that couldn't have possibly convinced you to do some holiday shopping for your favorite coffee snob at ironbeancoffee.com? Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? How you guys doing? Fingers crossed we still have football. <laughs> why why would you even say that? I've I've basically considered Oh Lord. Why would you even say that, Kyle? Because not only does that suck if this game gets cancelled, not only does that suck, but then we basically have to throw this podcast away. We're not throwing it away. No, we we'd have to record a new one. We'd have to throw the one we're doing right now away. So if you're watching this, the game's not canceled yet. All right, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you on this fine Wednesday evening? Wednesday evening, Friday morning, we're time travelers. Did you not know that? I, I, I knew that. I wanted to make sure the listeners knew uh, that we are, in fact, time lords. And yes, I just said time lords. And yes, if you've ever heard us uh, talk about how rule one, the doctor lies, those things are related. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you're just confused and too bad. I mean, even if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. It's fine. Kyler, is this a football podcast? It is more than just a football podcast, but it's majority of football podcast. <laughs> Major- it's a majority of football podcast because we also cover basketball. Kyle, on Wednesday, the Ohio State men's basketball team released their 2020-2021 football, nope, basketball schedule. Uh, it is, outside of Notre Dame, pretty unnoteworthy from an out-of-conference standpoint. The only one that's really worth noting is at Notre Dame. Yeah, I said outside of Notre Dame. Yep, that's the only <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I, they were going to one of those invitational tournaments, and yeah, it was then, it was going to be up in Cleveland. Yeah, and they were scheduled to play UNC, but obviously that got canceled. Yeah, so the yeah, only you look, you look at the schedule here. Their first their tip off game is the twenty fifth. So as this is being released, just a few days, just a few more days until a tip-off for men's basketball. They will take on Illinois State. 
you yeah. can catch it. You can catch it at 2 p.m. on ESPN2 or ESPNU. All right, Kyle. Uh, some bad news in the world of football. Uh, we, as of recording this, which is approximately 8 o'clock on Wednesday night, have three games off of the schedule. Utah State versus Wyoming, uh, UNLV and Colorado State. Uh, th- those aren't Power 5 schools. Um, and then we do have Texas versus Kansas off of the schedule this week as well. So that one, uh, a bigger deal because it's Texas, but they would have, I mean, Kansas is Kansas. And this is football. <laughs> We've moved on from the basketball talk and Kansas is Kansas. So yep. all of that sucks. Um, further things that suck, especially in regards to the virus, uh, the Ohio state parents, the family members are no longer permitted to go to the Ohio state games. And Kyle and I are of the opinion, a lot of, you know, we, we try not to talk too much about the virus and all that. And I know there's a lot of people out there who think that the virus is made up or whatever. And that's, I'm I'm like, we're not here to argue that. Um, I'm not of that opinion. I think it's a very big deal. Everyone please wear your masks, so on and so forth. Now, that being said, the Ohio State home games have had an attendance of about a thousand people. Now, a thousand people, that includes literally every breathing soul in the entire horseshoe with the exception of the people on the teams and on the actual grass. So that number includes the media, it includes security, it includes television people. That's a thousand people. And I don't know if you know this, Kyle, but did you know the horseshoe holds over a hundred thousand people? Now you don't say I'm not great at math or measuring, but I'm pretty sure that a thousand people, can socially distance in a facility designed for 106 or whatever the official number is, 106,000 people. Am I wrong in assuming that that's um, a a thing that people could achieve? I would think so. But the, the whole th- the whole thing about you would think that I'm ba- wrong, or you would think that they'd be able to achieve that. They'd be able to achieve okay. that. But the whole the whole point with the families is that they're close and directly behind them. So that they can, they can cheer them on and be right behind the players themselves. There, don't, <laughs> don't do that. Mm-hmm. You guys, but, but get Ohio, Ohio this State, section. Uh, you guys get that. Give them assigned seats, and say if you don't stay in your assigned seats, you as an individual are going to lose your privilege to sit here in mm-hmm. the stadium. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State's just not taking any chances. And, and the whole thing about this, the whole thing is that a lot of these universities and even conferences, they don't want to be the next university or program to be headlined with a big breakout or or worse. Yeah. So, so it, I, I can't bl- I can't blame for Ohio State to do this. It, it sucks. It absolutely absolutely does. But I, I can't blame. I can't blame the program or the university on I mean, doing this. I'm a person who's taken all of this very seriously. I socially distance. I've been working from home for a very long time. It feels like now um, this feels like security theater. This just feels a little security theaterish for me, but that's, you know, we don't need to get too deep into mm-hmm. it. I, I think, yep. I think this is a step a little too far. A thousand people can socially distance in a, facility designed for 106,000 people. But if you disagree with anything I said, then that's fine. You're allowed to. Yep. All right, Kyle. Um, I think that's all the news we have up at the top. We are trying to shorten these episodes a bit, so I don't know how much we're going to do deciphering day anymore. Um, it's <laughs> He's very good at the coach speak at this point, so I, I, I really don't see the value in it anymore. Yeah. Here's, here's the question. If how, you would how- like us everyone if you would like us to bring that segment back and if you would like us to i don't know expand into a third episode during the into into the season uh maybe consider supporting us on patreon 
um, because motivate mm-hmm. us. We'll do it. If you pay, well, we'll here, here's it. a question. Coach Day, how close is he to getting Belichick level? Oh, no, nowhere. No, 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 no. Or even Saban level. No, 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 no. Not even, not even in that same stratosphere. All right. All, All right. right. Let's, let's get into some, let's get into some fun things here, Jared. Let's, yeah. Let's talk about the sloop picks. Yeah. Let's do the sloop picks. Kyle, we have seven games, uh, none of which have been canceled at the time of recording. <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, this is the, this is the first, here. this is the first week in a couple weeks that I didn't have to change or scratch one of these off the list before the show. All right. Number one on a Friday night, we have Purdue going to Minnesota. Minnesota is, or rather Purdue is, apologies. Purdue is favored by three and a half points. Kyle, how do you feel about this one? I don't trust Minnesota's defense at all. And Purdue's running game is just, I think they'll be able to run all over Minnesota here. I don't, I had, you and I had high hopes for Minnesota this year. And obviously that isn't the case. I'm done. I'm, I'm completely off the boat. I'm letting that thing sink. Give me the boilermakers to cover. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I just, I have no, Minnesota might win this game. Minnesota might destroy Purdue. They also might lose by 30. I just, I don't know. I don't know anything about Minnesota. I know nothing about Minnesota, so I'm not going to, uh, to bet anything on Minnesota. Uh, I'll go Purdue. All right. All right. Who is, who is this week's guest picker, Jared? This week's guest picker. Uh, he is currently doing very well in our online sloop picks. His name is Michael Smith. Uh, he says about Purdue at Minnesota, he says, I've seen wet tissue stops. I've seen wet tissues stop more things than Minnesota's defense. Purdue comes into this two and one, including a win over Iowa, who just trounced Minnesota last week. Minnesota is bad versus the run to so expect Purdue running back Horvath to have a big game. Purdue wins this game going away. He'll take Purdue minus three and a half. All right. All right. Next up here, we got Clemson taking on Florida State. And I had to look at the, I had to take a triple look yeah. at this for yeah. the, for the pick here. Yeah. Clemson. Yeah. No surprise is favored in this game. Uh huh. But to my surprise, they are favored by 34 and a half points. Have you watched any Florida State this year, Kyle? <laughs> it's probably why. Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence is back. And now, me personally, I think they, they well, you can look at it different ways. I think, I think they could use some help right now in having some sort of um, uh, good performance here. Uh, really lining it up and just completely dominating and destroying the teams is what they're going to have to do moving forward. Now they do have a chance by winning the conference and all that, but who knows that, who knows at this point with other undefeated teams coming up here. So Clemson's really going to come out with their hair on fire. I, I think that Clemson's going to cover it. It's a big number, but I think there's a lot riding on Clemson right now. All right, Kyle, here's our first disagreement of the slew picks so far. Uh, I am, the number's too big. Florida State, bad. Don't, don't, Florida State's very bad. I also think that Clemson has a tendency to play down to their opponent. They know that Florida State's bad. They tend to not come out with a whole lot of oomph when they know their opponent isn't very good. Florida State does have a lot of talent. Now, they aren't doing anything with that talent. But there is a lot of talent on that team, and 34 and a half is just huge. It's just enormous. It's too big. I'm going to Florida State. Clemson wins. Clemson wins comfortably, but 34 and a half is just way, way too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. What does Michael say for this pick? Michael says, picture it. The year is 2010, and I'm telling you, in 10 years, Clemson will be a premier college football program, and Florida State will be playing awful. Would you believe me? I wouldn't have. Florida State 
uh, gave up 52 to Miami. Uh, Lawrence is back. Clemson will cover <laughs> 34 and a half by halftime. Clemson all the way. Confident. Well, here's 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 something for Michael and I here. Last two years, okay. Clemson won last year by 31 points. Mm-hmm. The year before that, they won by 49 points. Okay. So it's not out of the realm of possibility here. And I think Florida State's worse than they have been in previous years. Um, you're not wrong. <laughs> this is, we've seen some bad Florida state teams as of late, and this is the worst one, mm-hmm. but 34 and a half, just a lot of points. Mm-hmm. Probably a better Florida team here is UCF yes. taking on Cincinnati, <laughs> taking on Cincinnati. The Bearcats are a six and a half point favorite. And Jared, why is this so low? Why are Why you this so talking low? like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even shout. <laughs> um, six and a half is way, way low. I'd still take this at 16 and a half points. Give me the Bearcats. Give me the Bearcats. Kyle, what if I told you I, I actually kind of like UCF? I think they're on a bit of a hot streak. And I'm not saying UCF wins this game but I am saying that UCF makes this an interesting game. I would be taking UCF in a heartbeat if it was a, if it were at like seven and a half. I really wish I had seven and a half instead of six and a half. Really, I would take UCF right now if it was seven and a half. Um, Cincinnati, Jared, though. Cincinnati's I know. Cincinnati's out proving a point. They're like, hey, I know. look, we are destroying teams right now. So I know destroying teams right now. And we're, we're going on fake punts up by God knows how much right now, <laughs> just to prove a point right now. Cincinnati kind of like Clemson needs help. Unfortunately, with Cincinnati because of the teams that they're playing right now, they need help and style points has to be a factor in here. And Cincinnati needs to score, needs to score big here. And I just, and you, you talked about how how much you like UCF and how much they're playing well. Mm-hmm. What about Cincinnati? Both, I know. all sides of the football. I know. Cincinnati Listen. has been the better team. You done? I could go on, but I'll let you talk. Okay. Well, you, you kind of blew my dramatics where I was going to say, but I'm still going to pick Cincinnati. I, I, I was, that I was building, half, I was, and... I was building up to it and you, I, I, and by the way, I, that's, that's where I'm at. I would have taken UCF at seven and a half, but mm-hmm. it's six and a half. I'm sticking with Cincinnati. All right. Michael says here, the Bearcats are the dangerous non-power five team. No one wants to play. This is true. This team plays with a chip on their soldier, soldier shoulder <laughs> and wants to destroy everyone. UCF has a high-powered offense, but their defense loves to give up big plays and points as well. I think Ritter has a big game here. This game could be a little high scoring, but since he has the much better defense, I take Bearcats and give the points. All right. So he is... Where, where, where is he in comparison to us? You and I only have one difference so far, and he's with you on that. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. He takes the Bearcats and give, gives the points. Well, I was talking about FSU. I think, are you and he lockstep right now? We are Purdue, Clemson, and the Bearcats. Okay, so I'm the only one with an odd game out so far. All right. All right. Next game here, we got power of Midwesterns going at it. Wisconsin and Northwestern, undefeated teams. Yeah. Going at it. Wisconsin is a seven. Here's her favorite number. Seven and a half point favorite. Who do you got here, Jared? I got Wisconsin. I I'm, I'm riding Wisconsin. I'm, I'm all in on Wisconsin. I'm at this point going to go ahead and say they're undefeated going into the big 10 championship game. That's where I'm at with, with Wisconsin right now. Mertz sort of dust, uh, got some of that dust off of his shoulder 
uh, coming back in. Northwestern has a very good defense, uh, but I don't think they've played any quarterbacks to the caliber of Mertz yet. Uh, if anyone's been listening to this podcast this season, they know I have a straight up crush at this point on Graham Mertz and I'm rolling with it. I'm rolling with it. Uh, give me Wisconsin. Give me Wisconsin to win by two touchdowns. Forget seven and a half. Give me Wisconsin by two touchdowns on Wisconsin yeah. on Wisconsin. What's okay. Michael have yep. to say? Oh, okay. That was yep. you agreeing. Okay. Yes. On Wisconsin. All right. Michael says here, the game that will decide the big 10 West in my opinion. I, yeah, absolutely. Well, you could say that about the East as well. Absolutely. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Northwestern is off to its best start in ages at 4-0. Wisconsin finally got back on the field last week and absolutely dump trucked Michigan. Wisconsin's quarterback Mertz seems like the real deal. Real deal. And I can see why Ohio State wanted him. That said, Wisconsin ran for almost 350 yards against Michigan. I think Northwestern's fairy tale beginning ends this Saturday. I take Wisconsin and give the points. All right, next up here, we got, uh, I don't know what rivalry it is. Either way, it's Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a favorite number again, seven and a half points favorite. Uh, it, I will go, Jared. Okay. And I think this is going to be a close one. I think this is going to be a good old-fashioned Big 12 shootout. And I, if it's going to be a big shootout, I'll, I'll take I'll take whoever's um, uh, whoever the underdog is here. So I'll take Oklahoma State here. I I basically agree. I think uh, Oklahoma is out of the playoffs. Oklahoma State still at least has a shot at the playoffs. Um, it's an outside shot, but as we always say on the Sloopcast, don't lose twice, and they haven't. So, you know, we, we look at the score. Uh, the over-under is at 59.5. Oklahoma State, I, not even by Big 12 standards, Oklahoma State is playing good defense right now, period. Now, granted... They have not played really any big offensive powers in the past five games, but the past five games allowed 18, allowed 34, and that 34 was in a overtime game. Uh, uh, gave up 21, gave up seven, gave up 13. So this might not be the shootout necessarily that that you're looking for. And Oklahoma, although they have looked good, they've not played any sort of defense since playing ISU way back at the beginning of October. So it'll be interesting to see what Oklahoma looks like uh, offensively now that they're actually playing a credible defense. I'm going to go Oklahoma State. And I'm going to go Oklahoma State because the last time I saw Oklahoma play a good defense, it did not go well for Oklahoma. And because I think they need the win a little bit more. I think they have, again, slim, but they still have playoff hopes available to them. I I think that that's going to give them a little bit more to fight for, a little bit more desperation. And, of course, they're the underdog. And we crossed that threshold into seven and a half as opposed to six and a half, which makes it extra enticing because even if this game, like a lot of big 12 games seem to do go into overtime, well, then you're covered. Yep. So I, I I think Oklahoma state's just going to have to keep up with Oklahoma's offense here. And I just do not trust Oklahoma's defense at all, which is why I think it's going to be high scoring. I think it'll be interesting to see. I I think it'll surprise Mm -hmm. Over under, so over under, let's, let's, we, this doesn't count towards anything. This is just you and me talking now. Over under, is it 60 points? 59 and a half. Over under, is it 59 and a half? I'll take the under if you take the over. Yep, I'll take the over. All right. That, and I'll okay. tell you why here after reading Michael's response here. Okay. Michael says here, this is, a, this is the toughest game to pick. Oklahoma State seems to win ugly every week, yet Oklahoma seems to be able to be Alabama one week, then lose to Illinois the next. Uh, I don't... I pa- pause on that Alabama talk, buddy. 
zero and three in the playoffs. But mm-hmm. okay, your point. Your point is taken. You just never know what you're going to get from the Sooners. Oklahoma's offense has been on a roll lately, scoring 62 points in back-to-back games. That's why I'm taking the over. Can- Oklahoma State Kansas- likes to run the ball with Hubbard and play defense. Can they do that versus Oklahoma? I really, really don't like that seven and a half point spread. Those half a point love to bite you. I'm going with the Sooners and giving the points. Kansas and Texas Tech. So before we get too excited about 62 points, Kansas and Texas Tech. I mean, Kansas, you basically walk into that game with 30 points in your pocket. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Next game here, the battle for fourth place in the (laughs) big northeast. Fourth? Maybe fourth? How many how many wins does Maryland have? Uh well they chicken shit it out of last week. <laughs> we'll so see. one so one less loss than Michigan and Rutgers. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> ah. Um Michigan has taken on Rutgers. Michigan is a nine and a half point favorite. Who do you have here, Jared? Rutgers. I, I think Michigan wins this game. Ooh. Nine and a half. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, not two scores. Not two scores. No, sir. Absolutely not. You know what? I agree. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. I got Rutgers here. Uh, I think think Rutgers will definitely keep it close here. I just do not trust Michigan's defense. They just, they're not playing with any kind of energy. There's just no drive for this team right now they're just going through the motions right now just feels like that they've pretty much given up here maybe i'll be wrong here but from what i've seen the past few weeks it's just bad bad football being played Uh, rutgers rutgers doesn't have anyone capable of really taking advantage of this bad michigan defensive backs I think Rutgers can keep the score low, which will keep it interesting, which will help them cover. But I don't think they have the offensive firepower to actually beat Michigan. Again, I think Michigan wins this game, but nine and a half is too much. Mm -hmm. All right. Michael says here, what can you say about Michigan at this point? After a promising first game, the wheels have come off three straight losses, including two blowouts. Michigan is now 10 and nine in their last 19 games with seven of those nine losses being by 17 plus points. Now well, that's a good stat right there. Rutgers is improved. No question, but it's still Rutgers. Could Michigan actually lose to Rutgers? Rutgers ran out of every gimmick trick, misdirection play you can imagine versus Ohio State and managed to actually win the second half. Did the, did that give them confidence? We all know Michigan's confidence is near zero at this point. Milton seems to have zero clue as to what he's doing out there. Rutgers gets up early. I say, watch out. I love that spread for Rutgers. I'm going to say Michigan wins late, but Rutgers covers. Give me that nine and a half. And all that leaves right. one game, Jared. That does leave one game. The seventh game, we have... The Hoosiers of Indiana taking on your fighting Buckeyes. Yes, sir. It's game. Oh, boy. I totally forgot what time it was. Noon. (laughs) Oh, yes. Noon game, which means Jared on Fox. Yes. Gus Johnson special pair of undefeated teams. 4-0 Indiana, 3-0 Ohio State. Maryland. 3-0, Three and zero, you. Okay, Kyle, did you say Gus Johnson? Oh boy, I did. Did you say undefeated? Mm-hmm. Did you say noon? Pretty sure you did. Did you say okay. Fox? Yes. Did you say Hoosiers? Close enough. <laughs> then you know what time it is. It is time, everyone, to know your. Enemy. (laughs) 
All right, Kyle, before we get to know our enemy, first it's time to get to know our sponsors who help keep this show going. First, let's talk about the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, did you know that the Iron Bean Coffee Company's cast iron is in the coffee in queue? But that's a teaser for your ad later. Uh, I've uh, been working my way through my sampler bag. Uh, I have not opened this one yet. Uh, this is the Fear No Evil. I haven't opened this one yet. I'd like, I've just been keeping this one by the desk to show you guys on the camera. Um, I have, ooh, it smells good. I might have to try that one later. Um, the uh, cast iron, I think so far of the sampler bags is my favorite. I really, really like it. I am more of a, personally, a little bit more of a medium roast guy than a dark roast guy. So that might be why. That might be a little bit of my own bias coming in. But they have a lot of great coffees over at the uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company. Did you know that you can buy a, a sampler pack? So if you have a, if you're not someone who likes to give a gift card for Christmas, but you have a coffee snob in in your life, you can get them a six pack sampler, uh, so that they can like try six different flavors uh, and decide for themselves which one they like, and then they can go to the Iron Bean Coffee Company if they if they want to and get some more for the rest of the year. And the cool thing is if one of those coffees in particular is like really their favorite, then they can sign up for a subscription service, which will save them a few dollars a bag. Uh, they do have flavored coffees. There's a carrot cake, a blueberry, and a mint chocolate chip. Uh, but most of their coffees are not flavored. Um, there's the Fierce, the Rage Against the Dying Light, which is what I have in my, which is what I have freshly ground right now. It's also very good. Uh, the Ride or Die, the Cast Iron, the Odin, the Rocco, the Thor, the Loki, the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, the Fear No Evil, the Integrity. And don't forget about the Unicorn. What's the Unicorn? I don't know, and neither do you. It's a... Uh, it's an R&D test coffee. You never know what the unicorn is going to be. Uh, so you can check out all that stuff. Some of their more popular flavors are in K-Cup. So you can check all of that stuff out over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Soulcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company has three great gift sets for your barbecue loving family member or friend your dad probably right or friend <laughs> or your friend your podcast or, host or both <laughs> or both your your podcast he, co-host yeah he, he has three new gift sets. your podcast co-host wink wink you have them all already uh. <laughs> <laughs> he has three great gift sets on his site now he has the Just Send It, which is an S&P Bud, Sonoran Heat, Cajun, and Smoked uh, package. He also has the, uh, what do you call it? The Sweet Heat, which has the Four Horsemen, the Discord, Two Border, and the Old Fashioned. And he has probably the best named one, <laughs> the Whole Hog, which is one of each bottle each of the 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian currently has. And he has here that the sweet heat is 3050 and the just send it is 1650. But Jared, yeah, you can get 10% off of that yes. by using the promo code sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off. Also check out the Mad Canadian on his social media sites to check out where he and his food truck are heading next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas. Now, when you cover a butt for Christmas, do you use a Santa hat? <laughs> hmm. Whatever floats your boat. Or, or covers your butt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do they, maybe some, do they, I, I'm sure they do. I'm sure someone does because Christmas is crazy. Does someone, ha can you buy like pajama pants that are made out of Santa hat material? I don't know where you're going with this. No, your enemy, <laughs> Indiana Hoosiers. You say that like I did know where I was going. Indiana is 4-0 for the season. They have, on their way to this game, they have beaten Penn State, Rutgers, Michigan, and Sparty. 
They last last week they shut out Sparty twenty four to nothing. Indiana is led onto the field by quarterback Michael Penix Jr., who's having a pretty solid year already, throwing for over a thousand yards and throw nine touchdowns for the season. Kyle, true or false? Michael yes. Penix is the best quarterback that Ohio State has gone up against this year. True. I think by a lot. Okay, true or false? This is the best wide receiver core that Ohio State will have gone against all year. True. I I, I think also by a lot. Uh, especially if we're counting tight ends. Uh, let's see, Kyle. True or false? Well, Penn State has a really good tight end. If you don't, if you don't, didn't forget. Uh, you didn't play that great against Ohio State. I'm just saying. Uh, Kyle, true or false? This is the best team Ohio State has played all year. Being undefeated, yes. Or are they? I mean, we are talking about a team that. Went into overtime to beat Penn State on top of a couple really dumb Penn State mistakes and a questionable referee call. You could make the argument, if you wanted to, that Penn State is a better football team. Despite the fact, because it's 2020, let's play the game, right? Despite the fact that Indiana has not lost a game and Penn State has not won a game, I could, if I really wanted to, and I'm not going to spend the time to do it, If I could, and I really wanted to, I could make the case that Penn State's a better football team despite the records on the table. Mm -hmm. You know what's really interesting here, Jared? What's that? Both of these teams, Indiana and Ohio State, have a combined of all the teams that they've played. Mm -hmm. All the teams have... Well, I guess that's not fair because they've played. Three against four, but. Yeah. Indiana's opponents have won just three games. Yeah. And Ohio State has had teams with a combined wins of two. Okay. So Rutgers has won one game and Nebraska's won one game. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Good job, Penn State. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> come on Penn State so I guess, I guess well it, it, it is just such an odd year you look at I mean you look at you look at Indiana's schedule here you would think like oh you beat Penn State Michigan Michigan State just up front you're like those seem at least program levels it seemed pretty good it's like wow they, they beat Penn State beat Michigan that's a really solid record until you actually look at the records themselves there. And you could say, say the same thing with Ohio State. Like, hey, you start off the season against Nebraska and Penn State as well. Those look like, on paper, those look like really good wins up front right there. Yeah, you, they're they're really good laundry wins. Mm-hmm. You, you defeated some really good laundry. Now, people wearing that laundry, maybe not so much, but you defeated some really good laundry. So we look at this Indiana team, Michael Penix, best quarterback Ohio State's played this year. I don't think that's even a conversation. I don't think that's even close. Mm -hmm. I also really don't think Michael Penix has gone against a defense of note. I don't think he's had a ton of pressure, although Penn State uh, did put some pressure on him last week. No, the first week. The first week, excuse me. Uh, at the time we, we still thought Penn state was good and they still might be, but different conversation. So Penn state did put some pressure on, uh, Michigan state threw a lot of blitzes at Penix and Penix did a really good job in sort of adjusting to those blitzes, but they did affect him. The question here, Kyle is can Ohio state get not not blitz pressure, because that's what Michigan State had to do to get pressure on him. Can Ohio State get four-man pressure on Penix, and how does Penix react to that? Will Indiana even try is also a great question, or are they going to come out with some 
you know, two second pass routes and get rid of the ball real quick. Cause mm-hmm. one thing I do want to say right off the top is that Indiana is going to come out in this game, throwing the ball. Yep. I've, absolutely. Throwing I've, the ball and on defense, they're just going to really just blitz like crazy against Ohio state going to try to make Justin Fields feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, try to get him to make mistakes. But from what we've seen so far with Justin Fields, he's just been just stellar, absolute stud and throwing the ball, making just great decisions. I can only think of like maybe like two passes all season where they were just maybe three that were just like, oh, he shouldn't have thrown that. Ever right. all of the rest of his passes, like how many passes has he thrown? It's just ridiculous how how great he has been making decisions throwing the ball. Right. Uh, One of the things I think to keep in mind, Ohio State has had some pass protection issues in the middle. So I think Indiana is going to send a lot of inside blitzes, which might force Justin Fields to roll out of the pocket, where I do think uh, he is, surprisingly, and I say surprisingly because of how athletic he is, I think at this point in his career, I think he would prefer to step up into the pocket but the way that Ohio State's offensive line has been blocking thus far this season, it almost feels like a rollout might be a little bit more beneficial. And again, Indiana is a team that is not going to produce a lot of natural uh, four-man pass uh, pass pressure. Indiana creates a lot of pass pressure through a lot of exotic blitzing. So I think that's one of the things you'll see is a lot of blitzes. So... Can Justin Fields read those blitzes, adjust to those blitzes, get the ball out quickly? Because Indiana's defense is very feast or famine. I think one thing we'll see, I think best case scenario, one thing, best case scenario from Indiana's perspective, that is, one of the best, one of the things you'll see in this game is Ohio State gets some three and outs. But you'll also see Ohio State with some incredibly long touchdowns. The Indiana defense is very feast or famine. Uh, Mm -hmm. You hear a lot, especially if you follow the NFL uh, a little bit more closely or follow it closely at all, you hear a lot of bend but don't break. You know, let them get some first downs. Just sort of don't give up a big play. They'll get some first downs. Maybe at some point you can get a sack or a holding call, put them behind schedule, on the down marker, force them to punt, you know, Mm -hmm. force them to play mistake free offense. You see that a lot in the NFL. You know, we call that the bend, but don't break. Indiana does not subscribe to bend, but don't break. Indiana is going to attempt to force turnovers. Indiana is going to blitz. Indiana is going to put their defensive backs on islands and force Justin Fields to make quick decisions. And with a lot of these inside blitzes coming, how does that then affect the Ohio State run game? And we've seen at times, too, with Ohio State's um, protection, it's it's given up a few times. I mean, Justin Fields got hit a few more times than we would like to as well. Will the offensive line fix some of their issues that we've seen in the past few games here? We know this is a really t- very, very talented offensive line, but can they fix the issues that we've seen the past few games too in, in terms of like pass protection? Especially, the- especially, especially Justin Fields' blind side. We've seen him take a couple of nasty hits blind side. Which is why they need to improve their blitz calls at the line. And, but for the most part, Kyle, a lot of times when we talk about pass protection issues, especially in the past couple years at Ohio State, we've talked about the offensive tackles. That's not the case right now. NPF, we are a little bit concerned about NPF coming into the season. He'd never started before. They were talking about Paris Johnson potentially getting some snaps. And, you know, we were all a little bit worried. Turns out he's playing great. He is playing absolutely great. The the interior of the offensive line, which we felt pretty good about, is been underperforming. So, Kyle, uh, a Nevada Nugget, and those of you who are members of the Buckeye Scoop Forum already know this. I'm not going to give away the whole thing because it's behind a paywall. 
But one little Nevada nugget I'm going to give away out of a larger post he made is that Paris Johnson Jr. has been getting some reps inside. So is Paris Johnson Jr. getting reps inside? Is that just a way to maybe motivate the Harry Millers of the world to, hey, this job just isn't yours. You better get on top of your stuff. Uh, I, I like Harry. I, I like all the interior guys a lot. Um, I think that there is an adjustment period, but I think that being a national title team and being in a shortened season, I think that there's a lot less tolerance for those adjustments now than in a normal year, which is why a lot of us are so frustrated with the secondary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the secondary have their hands full here with uh, Ty A plus Freifogel. transition. Hmm? A plus transition. Yes. Uh, Ty Freifogel and Wope uh, Filler. Yep, Filler. It's, it's, I just want to make it's, sure I was saying that right. It's, hmm? And it's actually Wop. Wop. Wop Filler. Okay, yeah. My apologies. It's, a, it's uh, a nickname because as a kid, he liked Whoppers. I have a funny story about that, but we're moving on. Uh, <laughs> both both ride receivers both have 24 catches. Uh, Ty's had more success recently. I was kind of comparing I'm like, all right, so who's their favorite target and all that? Well, they both have 24, but if you look at the past two games here, a Ty has 18 of those 24 receptions for 342 yards. And, so that, and se that seems to be the favorite target right now while WAP earlier in the year had almost had almost uh, 10 catches for almost um, for over 150 yards in the first two games. Now against Michigan, they, they both had a heyday. Wow. Yeah. Look at this against Michigan. Ty had seven for 142 yards, 142 yards WAP 11 for 79 yards. Now uh, don't do not, Absolutely do not forget about Peyton Hendershot. He, a really good pass receiving tight end. Yes. Uh, they have a, you, you could make an argument that Penn State's wide receivers were better at the top, that they might have a better singular wide receiver and that their tight end might be better. But one, Clifford sucks. So let's just go ahead and just <laughs> not mince words there. Yeah, Dotson, Dotson's just an incredible, yeah, Dotson's, incredible receiver. Dotson's incredible. But Indiana is running four deep at wide receivers as far as talent level goes, and that does not count Hendershot. Mm -hmm. So what will we see, uh, especially because um, WAP is more of a, a slot guy. So who will we see? Who's the third corner? How will they perform? Can they limit the yards after catch? I mm -hmm. think that's a large part of what Ohio State is going to have to do because Indiana's gonna Indiana's gonna score some points. Let's I, I don't want I want well, this is this is me having some real talk with the Buckeye fans right now. Indiana's probably gonna score in on their first drive. They're gonna script a really nice drive. They're gonna march down. They're gonna probably make it a little look a little easier than we want it to look, and they're probably gonna score on that first drive. That, that's that's my first prediction. My second prediction is that Indiana will continue to score points and that Indiana is going to score more points against Ohio State than you are comfortable with. Uh, you're not going to like my score prediction. I'll, I'll let you know that right now. You're not going to like my score prediction. That being said, we look at Indiana's defense. Uh, they shut out Michigan State. They hold Michigan to three touchdowns. They hold Rutgers to three touchdowns. Uh, the Penn State game goes to overtime, and you know they end up giving up 35 points to Penn State. I say all of that to then point out who, who have they played offensively. I've already told you how I feel about Clifford. Uh, if you were listening to the slip picks, I already told you how I feel about Rutgers passing def uh, offense. Um, Michigan's Passing offense, uh, if you listen to Monday's episode, you know how I feel about the Michigan offense. And Michigan State's a train wreck. That's, that, that's just one big, ugly train wreck. Mm -hmm. 
Michigan State is if you only watch the last five minutes of 300. That's that's Michigan State right now. Mm-hmm. Point is, is that they ain't played anyone like Justin Fields yet. No one. No, no one did. And here's the thing, too, that you look at stat wise here. I, you don't you don't think too much about. Penix running the ball like you like you see here. He, oh, he's only rushed it 13 times, but we saw when he needs to, yeah. he can really extend the place. He can get those first downs. He gets that extra inch, <laughs> that extra yeah. inch or not game. or not. <laughs> Well, officially that extra inch. <laughs> so that's always been an Achilles heel for Ohio State is that mobile running back or mobile quarterback. Now we've seen recently with somewhat mobile quarterbacks, Ohio State's been able to handle them. Eh. But, well, Clifford ran all over Ohio State. Um, not, not this year, obviously, but in the past, he ran over Ohio State. I think he, uh, what I would like to know what his actual rushing yards against Ohio State were. Now you can look at what the official stat is, but that's going to include sacks yeah. against his rushing total. Uh, the Nebraska quarterback tandem didn't they rush for like 150 against Ohio State? If you combine the two, I don't. Ohio State is not doing well against rushing quarterbacks. And to Kyle's point, we've not seen. So far this year, Penix run the ball a lot. Now, that does not mean that he can't. So this might be the game in which they say, okay, this is Ohio State. We're trying to keep Penix healthy. We're trying to develop him into a passer. We don't want to run him too much like Ohio State does with Justin Fields. Justin Fields can run the ball, but no one really wants him to. (laughs) And Kyle forgets to mute his phone. What the hell, Kyle? How's the crew doing? Is that what that is? Was that a crew update? Crew plays this weekend. Oh, okay. Okay, so lost my train of thought. The <laughs> <laughs> um, point is, is that Penix, uh, like Justin Fields, can run the ball, but it really hasn't been much this year. And in both cases, because... I think we might see Justin Fields run the ball a bit in this game, if for no other reason than to make the read option threat legitimate. I think we'll see both of these quarterbacks who can run but choose not to, to run in this game. Mm-hmm. I think then, from from both standpoints. I then, also, then, from a running standpoint, I think we're going to see a lot of Master Teague in this game. Uh, Trey Sermon's uh, pass blocking has been subpar, and with... Indiana being a team that blitzes, you're going to want your running back who's better at pass blocking in there doing some pass blocking. So I expect a heavier dose, even if the rushing numbers don't back this up, expect to see a heavier dose of Master Teague over Trey Sermon this week. Mm -hmm. The Nebraska game, 165 yards by the two quarterbacks. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, what from, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Ohio State is susceptible to a quarterback run. So I expect, again, Penix hasn't run the ball much this year, but can. And I think Mm -hmm. will in this game. Yep. All right, Kyle. um, Is it time for Austin's over-unders? Yeah. Let's, let's. What do you have here for our over-unders? Receptions by players who are not. Olave and Wilson over under 15 and a half. Oof. I got to go under. <laughs> I, I agree. I wonder, I wonder where he came up with that number. <laughs> Cause it feels really big, but Austin, I, I give Austin enough credit that he normally doesn't just pull these numbers out of, out of thin air. Uh, so I wonder where he got that number, but that feels really high. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So against Rutgers, 13. Okay. Against Penn State, 10. Okay. Against Nebraska, 7. I take the under. Yeah. That, Give me the under. <laughs> by the way, Kyle, that was some quick math and some quick research. Well done. 
That's just, what I do. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ohio State first half points, 23 and a half. Over. Over. This is going to be a, this is going to be a barn burner. Bet the over. Over. Indiana rushing yards, 125 and a half. Under. Over. Under. I, Penn State. Penn, Penn State. Wow. I expect. Indiana. Hold Indiana. On. Hold on. Penix is going to run the ball and it's going to hurt Ohio State. Indiana is averaging 95 yards a game because they aren't running Penix. They're going to this game and they're going to have to pass to keep up with Ohio state in this game. We'll see. Okay. I don't, I really, I don't think Ohio state's going to blow them out to the point where they're going to be desperation throwing. Oof. The year of the tight ends, Jared touchdowns by both team tight ends. One and a half over over one one touchdown i'm gonna to go under no way over there's, there's turnovers gonna, there's by, gonna be so many touchdowns in this game this is a big this is gonna turn into a big 12 game everyone i'm warning you it's turning into a big 12 game turnovers by ohio state dbs at one and a half i'm gonna go under with this Penix has done a pretty good job overall he's only thrown three interceptions for the year i'll go under here he's gonna to have to really take care of the ball and if if he has two interceptions here, this game's going to be a blowout. You could also count fumbles because he just no. has turnovers. No. I'm just just saying. No. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm also gonna go under. But I'm. I don't feel great about that. I wouldn't put any money on it. Mm-hmm. Net difference in yardage. Ohio State by 145 and a half. Hmm. Because you, you look I'm at some gonna, of these, they, I'm gonna go these over, games. but that's a great that's a great number. You look at some of these games, like the Penn State game. Oh, Penn State outran them, or just yardage wise, but well more than double. And I think even was it Sparty? Nope, not definitely not Sparty. Maybe it was. There, there was another game where they were just uh, that the other team outrush them out offensive yardage them. And that was Penn state. Wasn't it? It was Penn state. And I think it was one other game. Probably. Uh, I don't but. have this stat in front of me, but I think among power five teams, Indiana is leading in the stat. And this is a weird stat. So everyone follow me on this. Indiana is leading in points off of turnovers, which suggest that they're scoring a lot on short fields, which would explain Kyle's stat of them not necessarily doing great from a total yardage standpoint, but still winning football games and still scoring points. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, so far for the year they've had, let's see, there's three turnovers against Penn State, another three against Rutgers. Yeah. uh, Four against Sparty. And two against Michigan. And those are turnovers that they are generating. Mm-hmm. Not, so was yeah. that four, six, nine, 12 turnovers, 12 turnovers in four games. That's, that's very impressive. Very impressive. Is it impressive or have they played a lot of terrible quarterbacks? So, <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> so the, the question here is, is Indiana great or so? Okay. Let me, let me back that up. Indiana's four and oh, one of the biggest, probably number one reason that they are four and zero is because of how far in the net turnovers they are. Now the question becomes, why are those turnovers happening? Is it because of what Indiana is doing or are they cap and you still got to capitalize off of the other team's mistakes. So I'm not taking anything away from Indiana or are they capitalizing off of the other team's mistakes? And then the question that really matters to Ohio state fans, can Ohio state avoid those mistakes? We all Mm -hmm. know Justin Fields takes care of the ball. Let's hope that continues into this weekend. Uh, And the fumbles have been, been pretty good overall. I, I don't remember a ton of Ohio state fumbles. Uh, I don't, I don't either. Yeah, yeah. I know Ohio State hasn't really turned the barrel over. Obviously not interceptions. Uh, no. 
yeah, they've been they've been doing really well on the turnover margin there. All right. Um, one last Austin over under. Uh, Ohio State passing yards over under two eighty two and a half. Over. 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 Big Twelve Ohio State, str- Ohio State struggling to run the ball here. They're going to have to pass it. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they struggle running the ball. I think they're going to struggle getting the running backs yardage, but mm-hmm. that's a different, yep. that's a different thing. All right, Kyle, let's, uh, we, we have, well, we have to, we have to pick here because we haven't done it yet. Okay. Ohio state is favored by 20 and a half points. Um, I am actually, I'm picking Ohio state to win. Don't anyone panic. Mm-hmm. I, I am picking Indiana to cover. That, that number is too big. I think Indiana's offense is a little too geared to take advantage of Ohio State's defensive weaknesses. And I think Indiana is going to score a lot of points. I have final score, Ohio State 48, Indiana 31. That is 31. That's not a number anyone wants to hear, but that's that's. that's I think what Indiana ends up scoring. That's a difference of 17, which is not a cover. I have Ohio state 45, Mm -hmm. Indiana 27. Is that 45? Not, not a cover. That's 19. Yeah. Not a cover. So neither of us have Ohio state covering. Nope. What does, what does our guest picker Michael have to say? He says here, who had Indiana as the biggest challenger to Ohio State in the Big Ten East this season? No. Nobody's raising their hand. No. Put your hand down. No one did. No. <laughs> as impressive as Indiana has been, you have to take a little closer at who they've beaten. Now, the name names will jump up at you. Michigan, Penn State, Michigan State. Man, it, man, it just sounds like we, we, just, we just said this here. Yeah. Nice work, Brad. This is the first time I'm looking at this team. We don't, we don't, we never, we never peek at the guest picks. But those teams are combined two and 10 this season. Two and 10? Two and 10? Yeah. Okay. Those two. Yeah. Cause they, the other team. Okay. Yes. Uh, the four teams Indiana has beaten has a combined record of three and 13. Indiana likes to run, to turn the ball over to. Now, I'm not saying this will be a cakewalk for Ohio State. Far from it. I'm saying Ohio State's offense will win this game in the end. Fields, Wilson, Olave will be too much. Uh, State 49, Indiana 24, which is a cover. Yeah. Um, I I wish I thought that Ohio State was going to hold Indiana to three touchdowns. I And by the way, you, I'll, I'll come on here Monday and celebrate if So if what's your point the total there, Jared? Uh, the point total... Uh, 48 plus 31 would be 79. All right. Michael has 73 and I have 72. And what's in, is, isn't the, what's the, uh, what's the over under it is 66. So we're all going well over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Jared. All right. Lightning round of ask Slipcast questions. Uh, first we need to do Stuart thing where he makes us say the other team's difficult names. Um, uh, yes. Lightning round, lightning round, lightning round. Liam Zichero. <laughs> Michael oh. Zimbawa? Z- Zim- Zimba? Zimba. Zimba? Zimba? Zim. Zimba. <laughs> Zimba. I don't know. I'm going to go Josh, Z- Josh Sanguinti? Almost like spaghetti? <laughs> Linguini? Linguini? Ah, uh, you should have given me the Italian one, Kyle. I should have. All right. I'll let you do the next one. Uh Luke Sheotovich. 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 Jordan Josevich. Uh okay, I'll let you have it. Um <laughs> Damar He Lewis. Oh boy. There's too many O's in this one. <laughs> oh, that, that's a Pacific Island name. I think you're better at it than I am. No, that's a lie. <laughs> C-O, no-fo, agato-toa. I think it's Totoa. Totoa. There's two T-O 
pairings in there Tatoa. But I think other than that part, I think that was pretty good, Kyle. Okay. Uh, and I say that knowing nothing. <laughs> um, Mackenzie Nawara. Nawara? I like that, yeah. Matt Bjorsen. Bjorsen? Yeah, it's very, it's very, it's, it looks very Swedish. Uh, DK Bon, Bon Homie. DK Bon Homie. My homie, my homie, <laughs> uh, San Dogstrup. Yeah. And, uh, the act, the screenshot has a thing in the way. Um, Davion, Davion, Aaron Poindexter. And that's Eric. I'm gonna go Aaron yeah. Poindexter. And that's, that's a hyphenated last name. Yes. All right. Uh, ask Loopcast. All right, uh, Duncan from yeah. the Discord. Feel free to feel free to ref bot me on this one. <laughs> Which, if you don't know what that is, join the Discord. You join will know Discord. exactly what that is. Uh, Teddy Valentine th- is in our Discord, and it's not going well. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we talk about running back performance in terms of yard per carry, not yards total. With that metric in mind, which is more future of society? A nerving per minute. The giant douche versus the turd sandwich. South Park episode of 22 minutes or idiocracy of 84 minutes. There's a recurring thing in the Discord about how that South Park episode from 2004 seems to get new, uh, more relevant every year, and as does the movie Idiocracy. Um, I think the South Park one is a little closer to home. So I'm going to go with the South Park episode. I agree. Okay. I agree. All right. Sun Card's asking us, he says, are you gents still wearing shorts? Outside? Nah. I'm not wearing it either. I don't have my heater on. I'm wearing, I'm wearing sweatpants. I, I, I have my heater on. Uh, let's see. Duncan from the Discord asks us, who's in more trouble, Jimmy Harbs or Coach O? Coach uh, O. Absolutely, Co- Coach O right now. Uh, yeah, Coach O might not just lose his job, but then not get another job ever again. Jimmy Harbs, um, even I, I think what happens is that Harbaugh takes a job in the NFL and that he and Michigan have a, eh, this is best for both parties sort of press conference. He goes off to coach the Jets or whoever, and mm-hmm. he'll continue his career in the NFL. Uh, Coach O could get blackballed uh, based on the trouble they're about, having at LSU right now. And there's rumors. I don't know how true they are. Just take it with grain of salt. That there's an extension for Jimmy Harbs. If he wants it. If he if he wants it. Yes. yes. Uh, from right, uh, Austin, if Justin Fields doesn't win the natty for us this year, would you still have him or consider having him the best quarterback in Ohio State history? Yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes. From a pure talent, yes, He's... but you're not you're not going to see that in like the records or statistics or anything like that. But from a talent, skill, intelligence, leadership, uh, if you're talking about the quarterback as a whole. Mm-hmm. He's absolutely, and it's not close, in my opinion, the best quarterback to ever play football at Ohio State, period, done, close, game over. He absolutely is. Now, one of the most unfortunate, but amazing, but also terrible because it didn't work out for us. Parts of the 2019 season is three of the best teams who I've ever seen college football. And I've been watching college football for a little while now. If I had to put together a list, a legitimate list of like the top 10 college football teams I've ever seen. Three of them would be from 2019. There is not a single college football team playing football in 2020 that could touch LSU, Clemson, or Ohio State from 2019. Those three teams were amazing and clicking on all cylinders at the right time, and it really sucks that only one of them could win. Yep. All right, uh, let's see here. Brawley asks us, does my following theory have the validity? I believe program perception matters in rankings, which may negatively affect the Big Ten this year. For example, I don't believe that a ninth-ranked Indiana is viewed 
with the same respect nationally as a ninth ranked Penn State or Michigan would be. Therefore, a win over a ranked Indiana isn't viewed as strong nationally as a win over a more renowned program in the top 10. From a perception standpoint, yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. There will be people, there will be voters, AP voters, and they all suck, um, who just aren't going to take Indiana as seriously as they should because they're Indiana. No, mm -hmm. they're not going to take them as seriously as they should because of the laundry. And that's unfortunate. And that's college football. College football is broken. And uh, we'll tell you how to fix it if you go back to... Uh, 20 some episodes ago <laughs> look look for our episode college football is broken and uh we'll explain to you why it's broken and how to fix it all right what else do we have next year uh from stewart underscore e4us vet they say wap filler is called wap to uh due to his affinity for whoppers as a child Yes. Uh, what would you be called as a nickname if your child, uh, for your childhood favorite food, uh, he says uh, he would be egg roll. Egg roll Stewart. <laughs> Stewart oh. underscore egg, egg roll. roll. <laughs> Kyle, what would yours be? I think, uh, I think I'd, I, do you have to think about it? Go ahead. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably be Jared mashed potatoes. <laughs> I think I, I liked me some mashed potatoes. Um, uh, cookie also probably um, would probably be worked in there somehow. Um, I, I, to this day, like mm -hmm. cakes, good pies, good ice cream's fine. Well, as a, as a child, my, you want to give food, me some cookies? I, I'm, I'm going to be a very generic, but my, my favorite food was pizza as a child yeah. i mean just because it's a just because it's a common answer doesn't make it wrong so what was, what was your favorite topping again generic pepperoni <laughs> kyle pepperoni kyle pepperoni there you go right. hey we got one more here jared and oh I my want, god I want, I want i want you to Everyone. tackle this because you you really like you you have something to say here so i'm, I'm gonna i'm just gonna I'm just going to sit back here and let you drive. Guys, it is the return of the Michigan Bucknut, our geographically challenged friend. He's been Ooh. missing from the slew picks for such a long time, and we're so happy to have him back. Our geographically challenged friend, please join the Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, we are weaning ourselves <laughs> off of Twitter, and it would be awesome if you joined us in the Discord and uh, just come hung out with us. So that's my invite to you. And uh, thank you for rejoining the Ask Sloopcast festivities. Um, he says, long time, no question. Yeah, we know. Uh, <laughs> how much improvement, if any, do you think we'll see out of our beloved Buckeyes this weekend after an extra week to prepare? Is this a big advantage or meh? Uh, it's, it's a big advantage specifically against Indiana having a little bit extra time to prepare. Absolutely. That's, that's, you get more time to prepare. They had a very intense one on, you know, team one versus team one scrimmage on Saturday to sort of maintain, but it's not the same as a game. It's not the same a game from a injury standpoint, not the same of the uh, same way as far as like fatigue. Um, and you were able to focus your game planning for several extra days towards Indiana. Huge advantage. From a season moving forward standpoint, I think it would have been really nice for Ohio State to deal with the passing game of Maryland before seeing the passing game of Indiana, as I do believe that Maryland would have been the best passing game they had played to that point in the year. And then Indiana would have been the best passing game. They So you just sort of would have taken maybe a baby step towards the Indiana pass game. Uh, so that would have been nice. Uh, from a season long perspective, from a working on the passing game perspective, especially because Maryland uh, very talented in the passing game, but not good enough to beat Ohio state. Mar uh, Indiana. I still don't think good enough to beat Ohio state, but definitely 
more capable of beating Ohio State than than Maryland. So it would have been nice to go up against a really good quarterback on a team that was not capable of beating you. Yeah, and the whole thing about trying to fix what was going on with our defensive backs and see if it worked against Maryland. Well, uh, you can you can look at it both ways and be like, hey, they got an extra week to try to fix what they have, but what if what they are trying to put into the game plan doesn't work? Well, then Obviously, you can try. We'll find, it. we'll find out in this game here, but yeah. So you can look at it. You can look at it two sides. So I'm 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 looking at both sides of the of the coin here. It's not a big advantage, and it's not a meh. Somewhere in between there. The answer, by the way, Kyle, is always it's somewhere in between. <laughs> if someone says to you, "Well, is it A or B?" Your answer should always, almost always, be, "Well, A and a half." <laughs> well, not entirely true. I does said, Michigan, "Does Michigan said, suck? Yes or no?" It is a I, yes. I said almost always. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. That, that is it, Jared. That's that the is end of the it. show. We are way over as uh, usual yeah, we're, we're recently. Pretty, we're pretty on time, actually. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the episode. I uh, want to encourage everyone, uh, maybe specifically our geographically challenged friend, Michigan Bucknut, but everyone to join our Discord server. Uh, that is discord.thesloopcast.com. What is Discord? It's an app you can install on your computer or your phone. It's somewhere in between a group chat and a message board. Um, it's a small community still. Get in on the community while it's still small. Uh, we have a Ryan Day helmet sticker game that shouldn't be nearly as fun as it is, but is... Uh, we have some fun bots in there and some good people in there and, um, it's, uh, it's a good time. Come hang out with us. Uh, Mm -hmm. there are premium channels in that discord, uh, and you can access those premium channels using, uh, Patreon. Uh, you can donate to the podcast. Uh, the $3 a month tier will get you access to all of the stuff you, uh, the other, the other stuff, you're just being nice to us. Uh, the $3 tier is going to take care of all of the things you need to get you early access to episodes, access to the premium channels of the discord, uh, a bunch of other cool stuff, um, perf- uh, preferential access to ask Sloopcast, a bunch of cool stuff. Uh, you can, you can hit us up, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. And if you're looking for any of these links, including links to our sponsors, links to our social media, any of those previously mentioned mentioned links, links to our podcast feeds, links to our YouTube page. You can find all of that stuff at thesloopcast.com. It's just a landing page where you can find links to other things that are more interesting than our website. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's it. That's my spiel. Kyle, do, what do you have in Kyle's Corner? Uh, not much. I'll talk about the crew. The crew starts their run to the MLS Cup taking on the New York Red Bulls three o'clock this Saturday. So as soon as you're done watching the Buckeyes, you can watch the crew in the second half, take on the New York Red Bulls. There you go. They start 3 PM and good luck trying to watch them on TV because it looks like it's going to be difficult to watch. (laughs) Uh, This is what happens when you have to play all of the sports at once. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's on a Saturday too. Yes. <laughs> oh, and can I also point this out? Cause I've been watching some Mac games. CBS sports network by far has the worst football coverage I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Get your shit. And I, and by the way, I watch conference networks. I watch the sec, the big 10, the ACC, ACC is pretty bad. I watch all the yeah, conference. <laughs> I watch all the conference networks. The CBS Sports Network is the hottest piece of garbage I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> I just, I had to get that off my chest. Mm-hmm. All right, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the Floor Walkers. Uh, they're fun. That's all I'm going to say. We're running over. Uh, so make sure to check out the Floor Walkers. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Floor Walkers. Kyle, how the hell are we going to shorten these episodes? And we took out the ciphering day. I feel like anytime we just take something out, we just sort of take that as an opportunity to talk 
more in the other sections of the show. I don't know, man. Well, I think part of uh, part part of the thing with this episode was Indiana was actually worth talking about. Yeah. Whereas like Rutgers wasn't. You know what I mean? So we actually spent a lot more time getting to know our enemy than I think we had in the the past episode. Um, but still, we spent a decent amount of time on Penn State and Nebraska. I don't know. We'll do better next time. No, we won't. <laughs> That's All an right. old saying. Yeah. Uh, if only we ever fulfilled it. <laughs> no, that's not true. Our first, our, if anyone out there ever wants to start in Ohio State or any kind of podcast or any kind of anything, <laughs> we sucked. First two seasons. We were terrible. Don't well, don't go back and listen to those. We were much better the second season. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that says a lot more about the first season than it does the <laughs> second. Oh, God. We didn't, I, we didn't get good till like season three. All right, Kyle, we need to end this episode. I'm going to rejoin our audio listeners. Once again, I'd like to thank the floor walkers for ending today's episode. And as always, I would like to thank the iron bean coffee company for sponsoring today's episode. So Kyle, we talked, uh, why you should buy from the iron bean coffee company. And we talked about some of the coffees that they have, I'm going to talk a little bit more detail because I kind of just ran through them last time. I said before I'm a fan of the medium roast in general. Uh, Rage Against the Dying Light uh, it, uh, has notes of cherry, milk chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose. That is completely accurate, by the way. That is what I was drinking this morning, and it's it's real, real good. Uh, there's the Ride or Die. I have the big bag of the Ride or Die right here. By the way, all of their packaging is amazing. I feel like one of the things I really like about Iron Bean Coffee is that they're kind of are bringing like a craft beer attitude to 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 craft coffee. Whereas a lot of the craft coffee places are very sort of prim and proper. This feels a little bit more like a microbrewery in the way they sort of advertise and, and brand and do all that stuff. I'm a big fan of all of it. Um, there's the cast iron. I already talked about how much I like the cast iron. It's my favorite out of the samplers so far. The Rocco, um, is, uh, pretty special. It is, um, Ethiopian natural at its best. Uh, you can get that one in a medium or a dark roast. There's the Thor, uh, which you can, which is kind of a half medium, half dark roast. Then there's the Loki, which is a half medium, half light roast. Um, all really, really, all the ones I've had so far have been fantastic. I have no reason to think any of the other ones will be any different. And, uh, we, we have an Apollo sighting at the end of the show. <laughs> he also thinks this episode has gone on too long. So with all that being said, uh, go to ironbeancoffee.com and check out all these amazing roasts. You're supporting a veteran owned company. You're sp- supporting an Ohio company and you're getting the freshest best tasting coffee beans you can get anywhere. And you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Swoopcast also brought to you by our good friend over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian has been a good friend of the network for over a year now and has three great uh, gift sets for your, for your holiday loved ones. Mentioned in the middle of the show, um, they have the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog, which is one of each bottle of uh, each seasoning that Mad Canadian has. The uh, the Just Send It, I think is I think is if you're I think in my mind, if you're sending something to someone who is maybe just getting into cooking or maybe doesn't necessarily know how to season. Uh, really well because those are just incredibly versatile spices. Yep, I it has the S and P bud, and the S and P bud, the snoring heat, the Cajun, and the smoked. All all versatile seasonings. Yes. The other one is if you like some heat. Mm. I call that my. I call that the wing. The wing deal. Yeah. The four horsemen, Discord, two border, the old fashioned. You get a good mix of. You can just put that on wings. You can put that on chicken or you, you get full flavors with each, each seasoning there, or you just get the whole hog. Try yeah. Try a little get bit the, of everything. The, guys, you know what? Just get the whole hog. Yep. Yeah. Be sure to use Kyle, the pro- Kyle and I have decided 
Kyle and I have decided you're getting the whole hog. Yes. And be sure to use promo code SLUTCAST10 at checkout for 10% off the already the already discounted price that the Mad Can- Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. And don't forget to check out our social medias to figure out where he and his food truck can't miss it is heading this weekend or during the week. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered for Christmas.